Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Preparing for High School Student Interest Programs presentation uh, for this evening, uh, the Student Interest Programs webinar. This is the second in the Preparing for High School series. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be provided later on. We have enabled closed captioning, and while the captions are not perfect, they may assist some participants. Before we get underway, I would like to do the land acknowledgement, however, we acknowledge we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. Thank you. My name is Ryan Bird from the TDSB Communications Department. I will be your host and moderator uh, this evening. Many teams have collaborated to help prepare and facilitate this evening's webinar, as you'll see on your screen. Uh, we have Diana Panagiotopoulos, the System Superintendent of Secondary Programs and Admissions, Reiko Fuentes, the Centrally Assigned Principal, and Ana Eng, the Administrative Liaison. Of course, we have Associate Director of Instructional Innovation and Equitable Outcomes, Louise Sorisco, on the Guidance, Career Development, and Student Wellbeing side. We have Lisa Edwards, our Centrally Assigned Principal, uh, Dr. Renee Rollins, uh, Coordinator, and Melissa Rabbis, uh, Elementary Guidance Level. I'd just like to acknowledge the many central and school-based staff who are here tonight and to assist with the Q&A. So just going over the agenda for this evening, obviously we'll start uh, off uh, very general, navigating the TDSB website, then move on to elementary central student interest programs, secondary central student interest programs, the application process, then we'll get into the selection and admissions process, uh, other secondary student interest programs like local programs, we have the high performing athlete programs, and then facilitated access to skilled trades. We'll get to out of area missions and then open it up to questions at the end, but we will also have your questions uh, opening it up uh, uh, to stop to answer questions throughout the presentation, uh, as well as at the end of the presentation, time permitting. A copy of the questions and answers, including those that we may not get to tonight, will also be posted next week on the Central Student Interest Program website. Without further ado, at this time, I'd like to introduce Associate Director Louise Sorisco, who will be bringing opening remarks from the TDSB. Louise. Thank you very much, Ryan, and a very, very warm welcome to all of our families and students uh, here this evening. It is incredible to see over 2,000 uh, members of our audience this evening, which really underscores the tremendous interest in our special interest programs. There is nothing more exciting than um, nurturing a spark of interest uh, with our students. Here in TDSB, we are committed to be providing equitable access uh, to these unique programs for our students and parents and families. I know that uh, you are very, very excited to take this next step with, uh, with your child. Uh, this evening is jam-packed with uh, information, and it may uh, be a lot for you to take in. Know, please, that there will be opportunities for you to reach out to us and to uh, learn more from our website. Uh, we are really excited to be partnering alongside you, as we always will, uh, as your child continues their journey in a TDSB school. Um, and uh, know that we are committed to hearing from you about uh, the interests uh, in growing our programs, uh, because certainly the large number of families here this evening uh, are telling us that you are very, very interested in math, science, technology, arts, uh, and so on. So we're just really excited to be working alongside you to make and to continue to strengthen uh, the TDSB as being a leader, not only in the province of Ontario, but across all of Canada. Uh, so with no further ado, let's start listening and hearing about programs. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Louise. Appreciate it. Uh, now I will throw it over to Reiko Fuentes, our centrally assigned principal of secondary program and admissions. Reiko? Thanks so much, Ryan, and thanks everyone for joining us this evening. Um, when students are truly interested and engaged in what they're learning, uh, it's a much more meaningful learning experience and students achieve greater levels of success. The purpose of this webinar uh, is to provide you with an overview of the various student interest programs that are available in the TDSB. While the majority of the programs uh, that will be reviewed are at the secondary level, uh, there are some unique opportunities that are available at the elementary level. As students and their parents, guardians, and caregivers begin to explore program options, it can't be emphasized enough that students themselves must be motivated and interested in attending these schools and programs. 
Again, a reminder that specific questions about individual schools and programs should be addressed uh, to the schools themselves at their open house events. So uh, a few important things to consider before submitting any applications. As I mentioned, open houses are a great way to find out more information about the specific programming that's available at a variety of schools, whether it's your designated school by address, uh, another secondary school within the system, or a school that hosts a central student interest program. In uh, applying for either out of area or for central student interest programs, uh, we have online applications and we'll be talking about that uh, during the webinar tonight. But if you require support or don't have access to technology uh, and need some assistance, please be sure to contact your child's current school for support. Please note that if a student opts to not continue into a program, a uh, central student interest program, that they would be expected to return to their designated school by address. In opting to attend a central student interest program or to attend a school through out of area admissions, uh, transportation is the responsibility of the applicant. And it should also be noted that all central student interest programs are in person. There we go. Hot off the press, both the Choices Planning for Grade 9 and Choices Secondary Program Guide uh, are now available on the guidance website. These are great resources to help you make informed decisions about secondary school. Uh, the secondary program guide actually covers much of the information that will be shared here this evening. It is a, a digital magazine, uh, so there are links within it to, to help you navigate and find the information that you're most interested in. So the gateway to finding all of tonight's information is the Find Your School link, uh, which can be found at the top of the TVSB homepage. So we've got an image of it here uh, on the slide. And so by either typing in the URL that's there or by clicking on the Find Your link with the magnifying glass uh, will help you to uh, locate many of the websites and also how to find your designated school by address. There it is. Next slide, please. So this is where you will land when you click on find your school and you can either look up your uh, designated school by home address. You can also uh, look up specifically to research more about secondary programs that are available for you to explore and also for those in elementary, the elementary programs that are available within the TVSB. So, um, under secondary program options, you can learn more about other types of programs and schools that are available to students uh, who are working towards their Ontario Secondary School Diploma, or OSSD. Uh, I'm going to highlight that there is a brand new arts search tool for secondary schools. We can go in to see uh, the specific arts course offerings that are uh, available in every regular secondary school in the TDSB. You can either search by school to see their courses, or you can search for a specific area of the arts to see which schools offer that particular program. There's also a direct link to the Central Student Interest Program website. Uh, so this is a quick and easy way to find the Central Student Interest Program website right there on the listing. And so tonight we're going to spend some time speaking specifically about these Central Student Interest Programs. Before we do uh, jump into secondary, I do want to spend a few minutes talking about elementary programs and again, specifically Central Student Interest Programs uh, at the elementary level. And these are available to all students in the TDSB in the elementary panel. Next slide. So this is the elementary central student interest program website. There's just sort of a screen grab of, of it on the right hand side here. Um, and so there are uh, unique programs and opportunities uh, for students who have an interest in the arts. We have four different arts based programs uh, that you can learn more about uh, in the sub menu with a little red bracket there is where you would find more information about the specific programs. Also on the website is the green box that's there. That is where the actual uh, link to the application uh, will be found. It's gonna be on the elementary and on the secondary page. And it's the same application, whether you're applying for elementary or secondary. Also on both of these pages, there's a Google calendar and it lists all of the important dates uh, around the applications, the different open houses for schools that have central student interest programs. Um, and obviously the registration link for tonight uh, and for other help sessions that we will be hosting over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so again, on this website, you can help, you can learn more about the programs that are available in the arts, which includes our former cyber arts programs. Uh, and these are the offerings that are available at the elementary level. 
The former elite athlete programs uh, are now referred to as high performing athlete programs, and they are not part of the application for central student interest programs. Uh, application for these programs for uh, students uh, who are performing and, and competing at very high levels uh, in sports will become available in January 2024. So briefly, uh, a brief overview of those elementary student interest programs in the arts. There are two schools providing a focus and emphasis on the arts. That's Claude Watson School for the Arts and Karen Kane School for the Arts. And digital cyber arts are the focus at two other middle schools, at Charles H. Best Middle School and Don Mills Middle School. In the arts focused schools, uh, there are different entry grades, uh, which is when most students are admitted into the schools. Applicants from other grades may be considered uh, if space is available in, in the art schools. Uh, and more details are available on that arts program page. In the, the former cyber arts programs, again, only uh, students for grade six will be considered for Don Mills Middle School uh, and Charles H. Best will accept applications for grade seven and grade eight entry. And again, the applications uh, for these programs are open for all students who are interested in pursuing these arts-based programs. So the central uh, student just programs for secondary. So the direct shortcut link is tdsb.on.ca backslash CSIP or Central Student Interest Programs. Uh, these are uh, additional programs in different types beyond the arts that are available and offer unique opportunities and a focus on a variety of interests. Again, admissions are interest-based and all students are invited to participate in the application process. On the home page that you can see on the screen, again, the Google Calendar is there with all of the open house dates and times and addresses for the various schools and the type of uh, central student interest program that they offer. The green bar, again, will house the direct link to the application when it opens on November the 6th. Uh, and you can learn more information about the specific uh, schools and the program offerings in each of the different types of programs on the menu on the left hand side, again, with the red bracket. Uh, so there's a, a sub page for each different type of program. So the arts, which now includes the former cyber arts programs, our exceptional athlete program, our integrated technology program, international baccalaureate schools, the leadership pathway, and math, science, and technology. And we'll provide a brief overview now of these six different types of programs. So again, it is important that, uh, that you are learning more about the programs directly from the schools. Tonight, we're providing that general overview. Uh, for most of the programs at the secondary level, grade nine is the main entry point. But again, some specific schools do have entry at other grades. Uh, it should be noted that if there are more eligible applicants than there are spaces available, students will be selected through a random selection process. Already mentioned the piece about transportation and again, students who enter into a central student interest program uh, who choose to not continue in the program will be expected to return to their designated school by address or their home school. So we'll start out on the next slide speaking a little bit about our arts focus uh, schools and programs. And so in each of these schools, and there are 11, seven, 11 secondary schools offering arts-based programming. Uh, in each year, students are expected to take a minimum of two arts courses. Um, we're looking for students who are interested and passionate uh, about the arts, who are looking to be in a school environment where that focus is, uh, is strongly emphasized. There's lots of clubs and extracurriculars that are related to the arts. Uh, there is no additional application that is required beyond uh, the application itself. So there's an expression of interest, which we'll speak about shortly. And again, we welcome and invite all students who are interested and passionate in the arts to apply. There are several different program structures, though, to choose from. And uh, you can go into more detail on the website, but we'll speak about some of the basic differences right now. Next slide. So focus programs. Uh, generally have students taking two specific courses over a variety over the four years. Uh, and each of these programs has a specific type of focus or emphasis. Uh, so we have a brand new program called Art Speaks at Westview Centennial. Uh, there's the Creative Arts and Design Studio at Lakeshore Collegiate, the Creative Center at Northview Heights Secondary School, the Cyber Arts Program at Don Mills Collegiate Institute, the Design Studio at Western Technical Commercial School, the Art Center at Central Technical School, and our second new uh, secondary program, Woburn Arts Collective at Woburn Collegiate Institute. 
Three of our schools have specific programs that applicants must choose between, and it helps them to further specify the area of the arts that interest them the most. Uh, in most programs, there is some degree of course choice uh, starting in grade nine, and if applying to one of these schools, you'll need to specify which program area you wish to apply to. So at Etobicoke School of the Arts, you can apply to focus on the contemporary arts, on the performing arts, or in the area of drama or film. At Claude Watson at Earl Haig Secondary School, oh, there we, oh, there we go. Uh, you choose either to focus on performance studies or visual studies. At Wexford Collegiate School for the Arts, it's either performing arts or visual media arts. And lastly, Rosedale Heights has an open application and students can choose art courses from a variety of areas each year. Moving along, our exceptional athlete program at Birchmount Park. Uh, the Exceptional Athlete Program is designed for students who are interested in participating in additional opportunities for healthy active living during the school day. Students take two physical and healthy active living courses each year. Uh, there's a focus on athletics, healthy active living, nutrition, and leadership. Integrated technology is offered at Ursula Franklin Academy. Ursula Franklin Academy is a small school by design, uh, bringing together 500 students from across the city. There is no local catchment area for the school. Cross-curricular future-oriented skills, such as conflict re resolution, computer technology, problem solving, student leadership, and exposure to international languages are emphasized. A thoughtful integration of technology has been central to the design of the school structure. Beginning in grade nine, all students take a business technology course uh, that teaches them a wide variety of computer and digital media skill, uh, based skills. This knowledge is then integrated into their other coursework, coursework, both in formal and in informal ways. Five TDSB schools are associated with the International Baccalaureate Organization and offer the IB Diploma Program to students from across the city. The school offers curriculum and programming that is set and mandated by the International Baccalaureate Office. There are many unique expectations for students considering the International Baccalaureate Program. It's highly recommended that students and their parents, guardians, and caregivers attend at least one of the IB open houses to develop an understanding of the demands of the program over four years. There are costs associated with the IB program that are required by the International Baccalaureate Organization, and these costs are related to teacher training, annual dues, specialized resources, program coordination, and participation in IB examinations. Other specialized programs offered at the TDSB uh, schools do not have the same required costs. Uh, it should be noted that in 2019-2020, the TDSB determined that students would be expected to pay $1,500 in fees in both their grade 11 and grade 12 years of IB programming. Um, there are no fees in the pre-IB program in grades 9 and 10. But due to the pandemic, IB fees were waived for the 2020-2021, the 21-22, and the 22-23 school year. The fee structure for the 23-24 school year will be determined in December of 2023. Should fees be in place, parents, guardians, and caregivers who require financial support to participate in the IB program will be able to contact their principal through a process for assistance. Uh, no student will be denied access to IB programming for financial reasons. The Leadership Program at RH King Academy. The Leadership Program is a four-year program uh, that begins in grade nine, students assume responsibility and ownership for their leadership development uh, in that they must take the initiative to become involved in a variety of in-school, feeder school, and community leadership opportunities. Students develop and expand their leadership skills through their involvement in clubs and councils, specialized classes, additional community involvement hours, and guest speaker sessions and workshops. It should be noted that RH King Academy runs on a unique calendar and a unique daily schedule, which includes a mentor class. More details, including the required program courses, are listed on the program website. Math, Science, and Technology Programs. The TDSB is reimagining math, science, and technology programs. All students with a keen interest and a passion for the worlds of math, science, and tech are welcome and invited to participate in one of the 20 unique programs. Uh, in order to meet interest and demand and to better serve the entire TDSB geographically, uh, this number includes eight brand new program locations. 
Each school will combine uh, a number of courses in each grade uh, where they'll make connections between the curricula and the world around them. Please visit the Math Science and Technology program page for a map of program locations and more details about each program. Additionally, please visit the individual school websites to learn more about the specific program offerings. Grade 9 is the only entry grade for Math Science and Technology programs. This is a listing of the 12 sites, including the eight new sites. Uh, so again, they have been designed to try to reach as far and wide across the TDSB as possible. And just to see this in a more visual way, uh, the dark blue circles on the map indicate uh, the existing uh, math science and technology programs, and the green circles uh, indicate new MST programs that were added this year. In addition to the eight new MST programs, there are 12 new local math science and technology programs that are being introduced across the system to support students in their local community, and they are shown in light blue. Please visit your designated school by address, uh, their website, to learn more about the programs that are available for all students in the school. And again, uh, whether it be in math, science, technology, or in other areas, many of our schools do offer local programs, and we'll speak a little bit to that uh, shortly. So while programs, all of the central student interest programs that we've just covered here are available to students from across the TDSB, there are two schools where there is insufficient space to bring in full programs of students from outside of the local community. At Mark Garneau Collegiate, where there's a math, science and technology program, 50% of the seats are filled by students living within the local catchment area. And RH King Academy's leadership program, 20% uh, of the seats will be filled by students that live within the local area for that school. Thank you for that, Reiko. We will now open it up to questions. One of our, uh, a number of question uh, opportunities we have during the presentation, I can see that dozens of questions are coming in, but dozens of questions have also been answered by our central staff. So we're going to be trying to get to uh, get to as many of those questions as we can. Uh, Reiko, starting off, you mentioned the arts course search tool. How does that work? Will that be Develop, will you be developing one for math, science, and technology courses in high schools, or is that is that just arts? So uh, I appreciate that question. We designed the arts uh, search tool to make sure that uh, students from across the city could become more aware of the unique arts programs that were available at their local school. While we have 11 tremendous programs that are central student interest programs, they are not the only, only locations in the city where arts, uh, rich arts programming is available. So the search tool will allow students to learn about what they can find at their local school and the grades that uh, courses are offered. Uh, we will not be developing um, a, a similar search tool for math and science, um, and, and that's because every regular secondary school in the board offers the full complement of math courses from grade 9 to grade 12 that will support all pathways and all post-secondary programs. And the same can be said for science, with the exception of perhaps environmental science in grade 11 and space and earth science in grade 12, every secondary school offers the full complement of courses that again will support students in the area of science. Um, for technology, I think that would be a good idea and something that we can look into so that people can become more aware of the unique tech programs that are offered at the various schools in the system. Okay, thank you for that. We got some more questions here. We'll some of them may be coming up, but I'll try to get to as many as we can. Uh, Reiko, is there a cap to the number of schools you can apply to? So we will speak about the application process shortly, uh, and we'll describe how choices are, are processed uh, in, in that application. Okay. On secondary central student interest programs, are the secondary uh, special interest programs available to all students? Uh, this person's son is in the gifted program, and they were wondering if there are any programs available only in the gifted program. So central student interest programs uh, are completely separate from our special education intensive support programs, and they're totally separate from uh, intensive French language programs. Uh, and we will speak a little bit to that uh, in some slides that are coming up in a future section. Okay. And now if you take a program in grade nine, will you have to continue in grade 10 without a choice? That was one question we received. Uh, so if you are part of a central student interest program in grade nine and are you are expected to continue on, it is uh, in most cases a four-year program. Uh, if you are deciding that the, the program is not a fit for you, uh, you would return to your local high school, your designated school by address if you did not want to continue in grade 10. Okay, and a couple more questions about, um, so first, uh, will... Uh... 
the central student interest programs accept out of school board applicants? And then how do international students apply uh, to secondary schools? Um, is, is that a specific school or what have you? So first uh, out of board and then international. Sure. Uh, so we accept applicants from uh, all within the city of Toronto, whether they are TDSB students or non TDSB students. Um, and we also will accept applications from outside of the city of Toronto, where the address of residence is not an M postal code. They are prioritized differently uh, if you are not living within uh, the city of Toronto. And we'll talk a little bit about the priorities and how students are seated in programs. Uh, international students that are already and currently attending a TDSB school at this time are, are eligible to apply for central student interest programs. Okay. Now, we have a couple of homeschool versus local programs and then central student programs. So uh, can we register at our homeschool while we wait for an acceptance from an art school? Uh, this person says they're worried about missing the opportunity to register for an art in our homeschool, then not being chosen in the lottery. For so Rosen in this case. We're going to come to the, the application dates and processes. So the application window for central student interest programs is in November. Uh, and students will start to hear in December, and that will continue into February. Uh, registering at high school, so if you are a non-TDSB student, that won't happen until, I, I believe, until February. Uh, and so the the registering at your local school, you, there's, there's nothing to be done yet at this point for September of 2024. So you can apply for a central student interest program now uh, if you uh, receive an offer and, and are, are selected for one of the programs, you can opt uh, to attend that or if you choose to uh, attend your local designated school by address, we would just ask that we be notified so the seat can be made available for another student. Okay, perfect. Uh, so I'm just looking, we have a number of application uh, process questions. So I think we'll continue on with our presentation and then we'll try to get back to uh, as many questions as we can. And with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Renee Rollins, our coordinator of guidance, career development and student well-being, who will be speaking about the application process. Renee? Thank you, Ryan. So the new centralized online application for the elementary and secondary central student interest programs will be available on November 6 at www.tdsb.on.ca forward slash CSIP. If you are applying for a central student interest program, you do not need to complete an out of area admission application for that same school. If you are interested in a central student interest program that is offered at your local designated school by address, you must still apply through the central student interest program application. Central student interest programs are available to students from across the board. Central student interest programs are an option for students. There is no requirement for students to apply. All schools offer a wide variety of courses in the arts, math, science, and to varying degrees technology, and will provide students with leadership opportunities during their four years of high school. Before you start the application, a parent guardian will need to create an enrollment account if they do not already have one. The student or applicant should not be creating this account. Once that is complete, here is a list of the information that you will need to have on hand to complete the CSIP application. Student legal name, date of birth and gender, primary home address, including a postal code where the applicant is currently residing, current school and grade, and if known, the student number and Ontario education number, also known as the OEN, programs and schools of choice, voluntary self-identification of student racial identity and background, contact information of the parent, legal guardian, caregiver, and an expression of interest completed by the student applicant. It is very important that the email address that is provided for the parent guardian caregiver is correct. Please take great care in ensuring that this is entered correctly. Please note that only one application can be submitted for each student. The expression of interest is to be completed by the student applicant. The applicant may choose any way to express their interest in applying. Accepted file formats are listed on the screen. You may also provide a link to your expression of interest. The expression of interest must, include, must be included in the online application. Please do not send this expression of interest to the schools. It is only viewed for completion at the central level. Each expression of interest submission will be read, watched, or listened to. 
We also call the expression of interest the EOI. So listen for that acronym throughout this presentation. The EOI must make reference to or be directly connected to the Central Student Interest Program and the type of programs you've applied for. Examples include a written submission, such as a blog, opinion piece, poem, short story that references the program, a text-based submission, submission using apps like Canva or Mind Map, audio or video submissions that contain the student's performance that is connected to the program, or photographs or digital versions of student artwork or projects accompanied by a brief description of the work and or its meaning. There are limitations for secondary applications regarding the EOI. Students must choose one of the options and consider that the written or text-based submission has a maximum of 1,000 words. The audio video recording cannot be more than five minutes. This should include the student's own performance or the performance of someone else with a brief description of how their work has influenced you. There's a limit of three pieces for the digital versions of students' artworks or projects. And this could, this could be the student's own artwork or students can submit three pieces of art from another artist accompanied by a brief description of how their work has influenced you. If you need assistance uploading or linking your expression of interest, please contact your school. Details about the expression of interest uh, limits for elementary applicants, which differ from the secondary limits, can be found on the Elementary Expression of Interest website. Applicants can apply to one primary Central Student Interest Program and may also include one alternate choice. Alternate choices will only be considered after all primary applications for that choice have been considered it would be wise to include a smaller program as an alternate choice. Here are three hypothetical students and their application choices. Applicants do not have to pick two programs of the same type. Applicants may opt to, uh, for two art areas in the same school for their primary and alternate choices, for example. So let's jump into our examples. Jamal's primary choice is Wexford's Performing Arts Program, and his alternate choice is Woburn CI's Art Collective. In example two, Chase has a primary choice of West Humber's um, Math Science Technology Program, and their alternate choice is Kipling's Math Science Technology Program. In example three, Keisha, her primary choice is Ursula Franklin Academy, and she does not have an alternate choice. If an applicant is selected for their primary choice, they will not be considered for their alternate choice. If an applicant is offered a spot in their alternate choice, they will remain on the wait list for their primary choice. So let's see what this might look like for our three students. So Jamal was accepted in his primary choice, so he will not be considered for his alternate. Chase was placed in their alternate program at Kipling Collegiate, but remains on the wait list for West Humber. Chase is fairly high on the wait list. If Chase stays on the wait list and a space becomes available at West Humber, Chase will automatically be seated at West Humber and will lose the seat at Kipling. This is important to note. Sometimes students and families end up preparing and wanting to attend their second choice. So if you wish to be removed from a wait list, please contact your school by email as soon as possible. And for non-TDSB applicants, please contact the Secondary Program and Admissions Office at csip at tdsb.on.ca. Now, Keisha is number 245 on the wait list of her primary choice. She can opt to remain on the wait list or she may wish to be removed. Remember, Keisha did not request an alternate choice. Once started, the application can be saved along the way. However, there are no reminders to complete and submit if the application is incomplete. So be sure to remember to finish your application if you save it, but don't submit it. Once submitted, the application cannot be changed. There is a video tutorial available on the application admissions website showing each step of the process, including how you can save your work. Students and their parents or guardians and caregivers to make every effort to attend all appropriate open houses before making a final decision about program choices. Open houses for central student interest programs and schools will begin on November 6th. 
The application closes on Friday, November 24th at 4 o'clock p.m. Applications are not on a first come first serve basis. All submissions received by the deadline will be equally considered. After you submit your application, you will receive an email notification. Please watch for it in folders, including your junk mail or your spam. All future communication will come from the same email address. The confirmation email also indicates that you have correctly entered your email address in the application. Should you require support completing the online application, we are hosting two online support sessions on November 14th and 22nd. The links are located on the Google Calendar on the Central Student Interest Program webpage. TDSB staff will be available to answer questions about the application should applicants require assistance. Staff will not be available to answer specific program and or school-based questions. Families are encouraged to attend the open house for school and program specific information. Additionally, a resource guide is available on the Central Student Interest Program website to support students, parents, guardians, and caregivers. French programs, including extended French and French immersion, and special education intensive support programs are not considered Central Student Interest Programs. Students who are in French programs or ISPs can apply to Central Student Interest Programs. Students are eligible to apply for Central Student Interest Programs without jeopardizing their spot in a French language program or special education program. Students in grade eight French programs are not required to apply for a French program in grade nine. Students begin French immersion or extended French at the elementary level and continue to the secondary French immersion extended French pathway school associated with, associated with their home address. Your pathway secondary school for French may be different than your English designated secondary school by address. Similarly, in grade eight intensive support programs, are not grade eight intensive support program students are not required to apply to continue in the program in grade nine. This placement process is done through the Identification Placement and Review Committee, also known as IPRC, annual review. And students will be offered placement in a secondary school. Your IPRC placement may be in a school that is not your English designated school by address. However, in January and February, applicants that have accepted seats in a central student interest program must make a decision regarding their grade nine plan. Please note, if a student in a French program accepts a seat in a central student interest program and becomes active in their central student interest program and then changes their mind, a return to their French program cannot be guaranteed. It would be based on available space at their French immersion or extended French school. And just so you know, students become active at a central student interest program sometime in mid-August. Thanks so, thanks so much, Renee. So we're going to continue on to talk about the selection and the admissions process. Uh, it has been mentioned before that where there are more applicants than spaces available, eligible candidates will be entered into a random selection process or a lottery. Uh, there are several priorities that will be followed during the selection process that we'll uh, cover in the next couple of slides. One of the priorities of the Student Interest Program policy has been to ensure that a broader representation of the TDSB is able to access and participate in student interest programs. While changes to the admissions practices that we've covered will assist, further steps are required to support four groups of students that have remained underserved in all forms of central student interest programs. In keeping with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's call to action, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit applicants will be placed in their primary choice application when applying for an entry grade. In most cases, that is grade nine. Applicants uh, will be given first priority for their primary and alternate choice applications in other grades uh, and will be placed if and when space is available. 20% of seats reflecting the TDSB demographic uh, in the 2023 student census will be allocated to primary choice applications from historically and currently underserved communities, students identifying as Black, uh, Latino, Latina, Latinx, and Middle Eastern. 
in circumstances where alternate choice applications are being considered, uh, self-identifying applicants will be prioritized in programs that have not filled their 20% of seats. In math, science, and technology programs, we continue with 50% of the seats being allocated to students identifying as female. And admission priority will be given to students who are residents of the City of Toronto. Only after applicants that reside in the City of Toronto have been offered placement in central student interest programs will students from outside the City of Toronto be considered for placement. If the number of applications from students who reside in the City of Toronto for a particular program exceeds the number of available spaces, no offers will be made to students who reside outside of the City of Toronto. A couple of ways that the application process for central student interest programs differs from uh, out of area admissions, which we'll speak to later. Uh, there is no sibling priority for central student interest programs. Um, it should be noted that students who are already attending an elementary central student interest program are not given greater priority for our secondary programs. Uh, there is no local uh, priority for students who live within the catchment area for our programs, with the exception of the two programs that I mentioned earlier that are facing significant enrollment challenges. Also, it's very important that students who live in the designated area for a school that offers a central student interest program, they must apply through this process, the central student interest program process, if they wish to participate in the central student interest program. So while they have right of access to attend that school because of where they live, they still must go through this application process if they wish to be involved in the Central Student Interest Program itself. Once all of the applications are uh, received and reviewed, uh, the random selection process will occur centrally and all communication will come via email from a PowerSchool email address on December the 7th. Uh, it's the same email address that uh, your application submission confirmation email that uh, Ms. Rollins spoke to earlier, that it will come from that same email address. Uh, and in that email, there will be a unique link that will show offers and positions on wait lists. Please do not contact schools directly uh, for results of the random selection process. You'll note from the, uh, the nuggets that are on the slide on the screen is that offers uh, will expire. Uh, if you can decline an offer at a later time, but again, please only accept an offer that you are truly interested in attending. A second round of offers if for available spaces will be made on December the 14th. Uh, and again, applicants can continue to check their link from that first initial email to check their standing on wait lists. If you change your mind and decide that you do not wish to attend a program where you have accepted a space, please let your current school know in writing or by email as soon as possible uh, so that your space can be given to another student uh, from the waiting list. And offers will continue to be made until the wait list expire uh, in the new year. This is an example of what the live link looks like uh, that will come on December the 7th for every student. So there'll be a blurb, some information, but there'll be a, a link that you can click on. Uh, and so in this scenario for student A, uh, their primary program application was the leadership program at RH King Academy and their alternate choice uh, was SATEX Math Science and Technology program. And so on the right, uh, the link uh, results show that the student was offered a seat at SATEC so that is, the, and you see the little second at the top. So this was the, the second, uh, the alternate choice uh, was offered a seat where they can either decline or accept this offer. And below their first or their primary choice, which was RH King Academy, uh, the student remains on the wait list and you can see that they are position number 11. And so that's the result that the student has received uh, from the random selection process. So the student A then on the left-hand side can either choose to accept or decline the seat. Uh, if you choose to accept it, you'll be asked to confirm. Uh, you would click accept seat and the messaging would change to what you now see on the right. Not, not only has the student been seated in the program at SATEC, but they have accepted that seat. Um, and so that seat belongs to them. However, they do remain on the wait list for RH King Academy. And with a position of 11 on the wait list, there is a chance uh, that a space will become available. They'll move up the wait list. And if they remain on the wait list, they will be automatically seated at RH King Academy and the seat at SATEC will be offered to another student. 
So again, if student A, uh, in this case, which wishes to remain at SATAC, they need to contact their current school, a parent guardian or caregiver needs to contact the current school in writing, so in an email, requesting that they be removed from the wait list at RH King Academy. Non-TDSB applicants can contact the Central Student Interest Program Office at CSIP at tdsb.on.ca. So here's student B. Uh, student B's primary program was Ursula Franklin Academy and an alternate choice was Central Technical School's Visual Arts Program. Student B was uh, placed in their primary choice at Ursula Franklin Academy. We can see that they were seated. Again, they can choose to accept that seat. And you'll notice that they were not selected. They were not considered for their alternate choice uh, because they were seated in their primary application choice. The central waiting list will remain active until February the 21st, uh, 2024. We will continue to make offers from December up until this date. After this time, the central waiting list will be closed. We will then take central waiting lists and they will be reduced uh, to local waiting lists uh, for schools that have a local catchment area. And they will only include students who live in area for the student, for the, sorry, for the school that's offering the central student interest program and students who have chosen to attend that school and are registered at that school for 2024-25. This may include both current TDSB students and students new to the TDSB who are registered to attend the school in September. Please note that students opting to attend the school through out of area admissions will not be included. And should space become available in the Central Student Interest Program later on uh, in, in June uh, or, or over the summer, uh, applicants from uh, these local wait lists will be considered for seats. And these moves will not happen until late June or early September uh, once people have settled into the schools that they're going to be attending next year. That's great. Thank you, Reiko. We are now opening it back up to questions. I can tell you we're getting hundreds of questions and we've already answered more than 150 uh, of your questions, either live or via text, but we will try to get to as many as possible. We'll kind of go back up. Um, Reiko, the difference, uh, how is the student interest program different from homeschool admission or out of area school admission? You touched on a little bit of this, but could you, is there a way to just quickly summarize that? Sure. Um, so choosing to attend your local school, the one that is your designated school by address. Um, first off, there's no application that's required. You have a right of access based on your address of residence. And you can take any of the programs that are any of the local programs that are offered within that school. So the variety of arts course offerings, language offerings, business, social sciences, all of the courses that are offered uh, as a part of the, the regular program at that school. In opting to attend or apply to a central student interest program, you're looking to take, um, again, the same, same types of courses that you need to earn your Ontario Secondary School Diploma, but you may be cohorted for some of your courses. So with other students in the central student interest program who have the same kinds of interests and focus as you. So in a math, science and technology program, you might have your math class and your science class with the same group of students. Um, and so the curriculum will be taught in a way to try to draw connections between those courses. Uh, again, it, it's an option to attend a program like this, uh, but you are earning the same diploma. Um, in, in all cases, uh, in international baccalaureate, you earn your Ontario diploma and an international baccalaureate uh, diploma. Um, but it's an option to, again, have a focus in, in the courses that are available. And many of the courses that you would take over your four years of secondary school would be the same courses as the students who uh, are, are attending that school as a local uh, school because they live in the area. Okay, thank you for that question. Uh, and we'll if, get to out of area admissions shortly. Oh yes, perfect. Thank you. If we apply to a central interest program, student interest program in a school which is out of area and get accepted, do we still have to apply for the out of area admission in January? Great question. No. <laughs> so the the two. Uh, pieces used to be one uh, before. You, you used to use what was called optional attendance to do all of this. It's two entirely separate processes. If you apply to a central student interest program in a school and are accepted, you, you are in. You do not need to fill in the out of area admissions application for that same school. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, a couple of fact checking questions, Reiko. Uh, will it make a difference if applications are sent in early closer to november 6th versus closer to november 4th i think i heard during that presentation that, that it really doesn't matter everything will be considered really equally 
as, as long as the application is in on time. Uh, so it is there's no rush to get uh, the application first thing in the morning on November the 6th. Um, really, we want uh, students and parents, guardians and caregivers to make informed decisions. Uh, and again, attend open houses, walk the halls of a school. Does this feel like what I want to be doing for the next four years? Uh, I can't emphasize enough how important that is uh, to meet other students in the school, to hear what their experiences have been like, to meet some of the teachers in the school. Um, usually at open houses, there's a presentation uh, where you sort of get a feeling for the priorities of the school, the vision of the school, the clubs, the teams, um, you know, that whole, that whole high school experience. So we really want um, people to make informed decisions and be sure about their decision before they apply to a program. Uh, so really, as long as it's in by four o'clock on November the 24th, you're golden. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, I think I heard this during the presentation, but just to confirm, 50% of the seats for the math, science and tech program uh, are for those identifying as female. Is that accurate? That is correct. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, are there programs or schools specific to kids with dyslexia or schools with an emphasis on supporting learning challenges of kids with learning disabilities? Um, so I, I would say that some of our schools do have, as as um, as, as Ms. Rollins mentioned earlier, have uh, intensive support programs and special education programs, um, and some of them are designed to support students with learning disabilities. But it should be noted that students with individual education plans who have learning challenges and are receiving accommodations can be supported in any school, and that includes in central student interest programs. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, if a student currently in the gifted program enters into a central student interest program, but later decides to leave, can they return to that gifted program? So um, I might defer to my special education colleagues who are here, but my understanding is the only way to enter into um, a, a gifted intensive support program is through that IPRC meeting, the Identification Placement and Review Committee meeting. And uh, that, that would happen again at some point in grade eight where placement is happening. Uh, if the student has already attended um, a central student interest program, uh, there might be a different process to that. Uh, that's right, Reiko. Uh, should a student leave a central uh, student interest program and want to be reconsidered for a special education intensive support program, the IPRC process would be initiated and followed. Great. Okay, thank That's you for that. Sure. We're going to try to keep on getting to as many questions as we can, and then we're going to come back to our presentation so that we can continue. Um, Reiko, can a student who is not in the TDSB apply for the arts program, i.e. moving from private school to the TDSB. My understanding is that you can, but I think we just we consider uh, TDSB or Toronto students first, correct? So residing in the city of Toronto, whether you are TDSB, uh, Toronto Catholic District School Board, private or independent school, if your address of residence is in Toronto, uh, you're considered within the same pool. If you're residing outside of the city of Toronto, you are a, a later priority. Okay, that's perfect. Can you clarify the difference between AP, specialist high skill major, and central student interest programs? So advanced placement courses, uh, the AP College Board. So these are courses that are offered following a curriculum that's set uh, by the College Board in the United States. Uh, and students who fare well on these uh, exams that are set uh, can earn advanced placement when they enter into certain universities. Uh, depends on the university, depends on the exam, depends on their score. And so many of our schools do offer some AP courses. Uh, they differ from school to school and they may change from year to year. These are considered local uh, courses, so they are available to any student that is attending that school. Uh, they're not a central student interest program. You don't apply from grade eight to uh, to grade nine to do AP. Uh, you may be attending a school that offer that has AP offerings, um, and and you would have the opportunity to take those courses. Okay, uh, another quick one. Uh, most of the central student interest programs grade nine. Well, yes, I, I believe most of them start in grade nine. Is that fair to say, Rico? Sorry, one more time, which type of programs? The, the, the question was, are most of the central student interest programs uh, grade nine? Uh, yeah, my understanding is, yes, they, they do start in grade nine, but obviously they continue through your secondary career. Correct. So they will run for the course of three or four years uh, in secondary school, but some uh, programs will take applicants for grade 10. So where current grade nines could be applying for grade 10 entry, and all of that is listed on the individual pro uh, on the um, 
the Central Student Interest different program websites, which schools might have grade 10, and even a few schools have programs have grade 11 entry. We have a couple of questions about the difference between local or regular programming versus central programming slash special interest programs. Uh, can you just give a little bit of a more description on that? Just what, what is the difference? So in, in a central student interest program that has a particular focus or a theme, uh, again, pulling together students with a common interest and a passion uh, to be in certain uh, specifically identified courses together, uh, where again, there's some intentionality on how the curriculum um, might be, again, brought together cross-curricularly. So again, I mentioned the example of math and science being infused. Uh, another, I know that in the leadership program, the civics and the careers course is one of the specific program courses where it's being, again, taught through the lens of leadership uh, in terms of civic responsibility. Uh, and uh, how that relates to career pathways. Uh, so again, it, it's it's a it's a lens through which we're looking at the curriculum, and we're hey. hopefully working with students who have an interest in that lens. So really trying to tap into uh, their engagement in school. Thank you for that. One more, and then we will get back to our presentation. Uh, is the TDSB looking to expand central student interest programs to make it available to more children across the city? Well, I, I think you did mention that we already have two that you've just added. Two brand new arts programs and eight math, science and technology programs. And the uh, the locations that were chosen were chosen very strategically to meet the needs of areas that were underserved um, due to geographic distance from where the existing programs were. OK, perfect. All right. With that, we have tried to get to as many questions during that section. There will be an opportunity at the end if we have enough time. But uh, Reiko will continue with the rest of the presentation. Thanks so much. Uh, so again, I'm going to speak a little bit now about uh, local programs. And so many of TDSB's uh, student interest programs are actually local programs. So they're offered at local schools to support the needs and interests of students that are registered at the school. And students, parents, guardians, and caregivers are encouraged to attend their local school or their designated school by address open house to learn about what these options are in their local school community. All students at a school should be able to select or join a local program and to take local courses through the course selection process. Students interested in a local program uh, may opt to attend uh, the school th through out of area admissions if it isn't their local, uh, their designated school by address. And again, visiting school websites is a great way to learn more about uh, the different programs, the different courses and the different focuses that are uh, the incredible variety of secondary schools in the TDSB has to offer. So some examples of local programs, and so it was asked, but I didn't answer before, are specialist high skills majors. Uh, and so these are programs uh, geared around a particular sector, an employment sector. They focus in grade 11 and grade 12. Uh, they look to, again, draw and uh, make connections with um, other, uh, other disciplines, but looking at subject areas that relate to, again, specific disciplines. So it could be the health and wellness field. Uh, there's business uh, specialist high skills majors, uh, and there are several that are related to areas of the trades. Uh, and so the Specialist High Skills Majors website was just put into the chat so you can learn more about these programs that, again, are local programs for any student attending the school, and they start in grade uh, 11. So you don't apply from grade 8 into grade 9 into a Specialist High Skills Major, but it is an option that you can uh, be involved in in your local school. As I mentioned, there are local math, science, and technology programs uh, that are being supported this year. And there are also schools that offer special certifications or external programs uh, to students in the school. Uh, we have a few schools offering the Cisco Nortel networking. Uh, and there's also the laws program, law in action within schools. So just a couple of examples. Uh, another type of uh, student interest program are the high performing athlete programs. Um, high performing athlete programs provide academic programming for students who are elite athletes uh, involved in provincial, national or international competition. In order to meet the demands of intense training schedules, schools provide more flexible timetables in order to balance school with out of school commitments. This way athletes can strive for both academic and athletic excellence. Students can apply for a morning program to accommodate um, uh, afternoon training, or they can apply for an afternoon program when training takes place in the morning. Additionally, uh, as part of the program, special consideration is given um, when school is missed as a result of competition. 
Uh, there will be a new online application run centrally. Uh, it will be available for the, the locations offering the High Performing Athlete programs uh, released in early 2024. Please check the High Performing Athlete program website for more details in the upcoming months. Uh, and so this is a separate application. It doesn't overlap with central student interest programs or out of area admission. It's a specific uh, application for those students who meet the eligibility uh, of training again for at least 15 hours during the school day each week. So facilitated access to skilled trades. I mentioned uh, the specialist high skills majors programs uh, and how they are involved in, in a variety of sectors, but looking at specifically how we can support at students accessing the skilled trades based uh, um, specialist high skills majors. So again, some TDSB schools uh, are able to provide skilled trades uh, as part of their facility uh, design. Other schools do not have this available. Students in grade 10 to 12 who are interested in joining a specialist high skills major that's in a sector of the skilled trades can apply to move to a school with, where the program is available and where space is available. Students can move through the FAST process, again, facilitated access to skilled trades uh, for the start of semester two or for the start of the school year. So the six uh, areas uh, of the trades, again, that, that, uh, that we have for the specialist high skills majors for FAST are aerospace and aviation, construction, hospitality and tourism, manufacturing, transportation, and horticulture and landscaping. The online application timelines are listed on the screen, uh, and uh, we'll put a link into the chat uh, about how to access the, the list of schools for the, the six different sectors that I've mentioned. Uh, and again, this is for students in grades 10, 11, and 12 uh, to join uh, where there is space available in the skilled trades-based programs. Uh, that These are coveted seats uh, from across the city. Out of area admissions. Um, every student, as we've mentioned, has a home school or a designated school by address based on their address of residence. And that local school will provide rich programming options that will support all pathways. But some students may be looking uh, to go to a school somewhere else in the system. Uh, students may be looking for specific courses. It could be some areas of the arts that we mentioned, local programs. It could be a specialist high skills major uh, for, uh, or any other kind of unique programming uh, that might not be available at their, at their designated school by address or a school that maybe perhaps meets their travel needs um, more appropriately. And again, this is for regular program. This is a separate process from central student interest programs. So students wishing to attend uh, a regular program in a school that is not their designated school by address, uh, this is done through the out of area admissions process, again, formerly known as optional attendance. So this is an entirely separate process than the central student interest program application. Students that have accepted a placement in a central student interest program may still apply through out of area admissions to a different school. They can apply, but if they are offered a seat, the applicant will need to decide uh, which seat they're going to accept. If they accept the out of area admission seat, they are uh, foregoing their seat in their central student interest program. They cannot hold seats in both options. Just like central student interest programs, uh, transportation is not provided when students are making the choice to attend a school that is not their local school. So there is, a, again, a centralized online application. Families that require support in accessing technology should connect with their current school for assistance. The online application will open in January, right after the winter break. So there's plenty of time to attend, I'm going to say it, open houses uh, and learn more about your school options, including your designated school by address. Students can apply to one school and it's either to an English language program or if they're already in an intensive French program, they may opt to uh, apply uh, for an intensive French program where they're available. Seats are randomly filled based on the selection priorities, which can be found on the out of area admissions website and we'll cover right here on this next slide. So as seats are available, our first priority is, uh, and I'm speaking about applying for secondary school, our siblings, so where there is a sibling already attending the requested school, they need to be in grade 10, 11, or 12, and must be returning to the school for 2024-2025. Uh, we are in the process of phasing out the sibling priority uh, in secondary schools. 
Our second priority are students that are attending a feeder school in the same program. A feeder school is a local middle school where most or many students also live in area for a particular secondary school. But sometimes there are students attending that feeder school who are not in area. And so priority two allows students to stay with classmates uh, and to stay with their group of friends as they transition to secondary school. And again, if there is space available. Uh, the third priority uh, only applies to elementary school uh, entrants. Uh, priority four are current TDSB students, so those who are attending a TDSB school. Priority five are other applicants residing in the City of Toronto, so again, either attending a Toronto Catholic District School Board, private school, independent school. Uh, in out-of-area admissions, this is held uh, at a different level than TDSB students. And lastly, priority six has to do with applicants, again, residing outside of the city of Toronto. So not all schools are available to, uh, to apply to through out-of-area admissions. Each school, based on its projections and plannings and work with enrollment, is given an out-of-area admissions status. Again, not every school is able to accept applications from out-of-area students. Schools that are only able to support students that live within their catchment area are considered to be closed and they no out of area students can apply. So in that online application, those schools are not even listed. Schools that have a very small amount of space uh, may only be able to accept applications from that first priority siblings. Uh, and so they are designated as being limited siblings. So only students with a sibling currently attending, again, grade 10, 11, and 12, and returning to the school, they are the only ones eligible to apply to schools with this uh, status. Schools with a little bit more space uh, may be able to, again, accommodate some or all applicants from siblings and those who are attending a feeder school. But those who do not have a sibling or are not attending the feeder school are not eligible to apply to those schools. And the remaining schools are considered limited, where students from all priority groups may apply. In all cases, the number of students that can be accepted through out-of-area admissions will be dependent on the number of local students opting to attend and the projected number of students that the school will be staffed for. In all of these schools, if demand uh, for access is greater than the number of spaces available, students will be selected through a lottery or a random selection process following the priorities that we outlined earlier. Schools will only be able to admit students if space is available. Schools will not know the number of available seats until early February when the random selection process takes place. The number of seats again is dependent on the number of local in-area students that are planning to attend the school. It should be noted that students can apply through out-of-area admissions for any grade, not only for grade nine. So current grade nines could apply to a different school for grade 10 entry through out of area admissions. Uh, and again, uh, it is based on seat and space availability in the schools. On the out of area admissions website, you can find the out of area admissions statuses for each school, each secondary school on the TDSB. Uh, the secondary school statuses should be finalized on the website, hopefully before the end of the day tomorrow, Friday, November the 3rd, or at the latest Monday, November the 6th. A particular note uh, about intensive French programs. So French, students in a French program who are attending their elementary school as an out of area admission student must return to the pathway secondary school that's associated with their home address. A student who began the program in a French immersion or extended French school and then changed address since the initial placement is considered to be out of area to their school. If a student wishes to attend a secondary school other than the one associated with their home address, so to stay with their classmates or cohort, they would need to apply through out of area admissions uh, within the timelines that are outlined uh, in order to be considered uh, for that option. Uh, a quick visual uh, just to sort of show how the many different pieces come together. Uh, so as we've mentioned, secondary open houses begin in November and they run until mid-January. Our focus in the three weeks of November are for the open houses that have, uh, for schools that have central student interest programs. So they run from, again, November the 6th to the 24th, all of the open houses, and that's the window for the applications. 
the Central Student Interest Program random selection process and offers uh, start in early December and they continue to late February. The out of area admissions application runs from January the 8th to January the 26th. And those offers are made from February 21st, February 7th to 21st. For grade eight students in the TDSB, they will be doing their uh, grade nine course selections through my blueprint during the month of February. And all of those need to be submitted by February 26th. And that's where students will actually be uh, confirming which school they're planning on attending the following year. Uh, some of our addresses lead to more than one designated secondary school. And so the student would submit courses for the school that they are choosing to attend. In February and March, we transfer students uh, through the school information system uh, to their secondary school, and secondary schools then start to develop their timetables for the upcoming year from April until June. So it's sort of just that schema and timeline uh, of what lies ahead. Okay, thank you for that, Reiko. That now concludes the presentation portion, and now uh, we will try to get to as many questions as possible. Uh, as we've I see the, the count on our list, we've answered more than 250 questions, and we're going to keep on going rapid fire until we can answer no more. Uh, Rachel, awesome. what, uh, what if the open house is after the application period closes? Does that we, Do we run into those issues? So all of our central student interest programs have their open houses scheduled uh, before the application deadline closes. I believe there are two schools that have their open house on the 23rd, so the day oh. before it closes. Okay, okay. thank you for that. Uh, if my child's application for a special program is declined, student interest program is declined, do they have the option to apply to an out-of-area school later on? Yes, absolutely. They're two independent processes. Okay, thank you for that. If a student applies to two programs with a different focus, uh, for example, one for arts and one for IB as an alternate choice, do they write a single letter of interest or one for each uh, focus school? Uh, students are only submitting uh, and including one expression of interest. Uh, if they are applying for two different types of programs, it might be uh, it might be wise to include a, a little bit about why the two uh, particular areas are of interest. Uh, but if it only focuses on one, uh, their primary choice, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, if a school that offers a student interest program but is not shown in the school by home address, does that mean they will need an application? Again, it says if a school that offers a student interest program uh, but is not shown in the school by home address, does that mean we will need an application? M my understanding is that you'll need an application for regarding, regardless of what student uh, or student interest program you you pick. Yes. Uh, so again, for any of the central student interest programs, even the ones at schools that are your designated school by address, to access the Central Student Interest Program, you must apply using the online application from November the 6th to 24th. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, many questions about how many programs students can apply for. So can you just quickly remind us how many programs students can apply for in the Central Student Interest Programs and out of area schools? So for Central Student Interest Programs, there is a primary application and students may include an alternate. No program will make offers to alternate applicants until all of their primary applications have been met. So you, you have your primary choice, which is the one that is first weighted, but programs that go through all of their primary applicants can then move on to uh, people who have listed that program as their alternate choice. For out of area admissions, it is one choice. Whether it's English or French, there is only one choice for out of area admissions. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, lots of questions about expression of interest. So I'll, I'll have a few for you here, Rico. Uh, are expressions of interest required for each school that you select on your application? Is that uh, is that expression of interest ranked, rated, judged? So I think you answered just answered this as far as uh, it's only one expression of interest. But if you're if you're applying to different um, a different focus in the the two choices, you might want to cover both within that same expression. Correct. That's correct. Uh, and we go into further detail about uh, the requirements for an expression of interest on there's both an elementary and a, a secondary expression of interest website on the Central Student Interest Program websites to talk about the criteria. 
Um, I would say that we're, we're looking at the expressions of interest as being just that. Is a student expressing interest? Uh, if a student were to submit saying something saying, please don't take me, I don't want to go, I would say that there, that that is not meeting the requirements of an expression of interest. Uh, if what the, is submitted, we've said, you know, it needs to relate in some way to the uh, to the application. Uh, if someone submits something that is completely unrelated, um, we, we would follow up with them and say, are you sure this is your expression of interest? Um, but again, it does need to make that connection. And I, I should also point out uh, that anything that is submitted as an expression of interest needs to adhere to uh, TDSB uh, expectations around discrimination, hate-based, race-based, uh, um, and those would be followed up on uh, should anything like that be submitted, and those would be deemed ineligible. Okay, thank you for that. Now, so on that website, did it also gets into how to write an expression of interest? I guess, I guess some of those that key criteria that you want to include there. So we're not being prescriptive about it must cover this, this, and this. It, it really is up to, we want to make it as open uh, for applicants to, to find a way to express their interest. This is not meant to take the place of a huge, massive portfolio, uh, but it is a way that the student is able to articulate. And so again, whether that's in writing or whether it's... Um, uh, a verbal recording or whether it's a performance or again capturing projects or art that a student has completed and, and explaining this is this is what I love to do this is why I want to come to this program one question that someone was asking is why have an expression of interest if the if the process there's a random selection process but it really is to establish that there is a true expression of interest they are they're passionate about x y or z is that fair to say that's exactly it. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, what if my child is currently in an arts program and is interested in continuing this program in high school? Is there a possibility my child will be declined because of the lottery process? So I would say that there, again, every student that's applying will be considered through the random selection process. Uh, and there isn't a guarantee for students who are in elementary uh, central student interest programs that they will be automatically granted access at the secondary level. You talked about siblings earlier, but this this one question for twins, what is the policy with the lottery for art schools, in this case, Rosedale or any central student interest program, if one twin uh, gets one of the spaces, is the other automatically accepted or is that con considered on a case by case, like uh, individual basis? They're, they are each individual applicants. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, sorry, just going through the questions. Uh, will sibling priority be in place for this year's application? When will it be phased out? Just a question about the timeline. So this is for, I'm assuming, out of area when we talked about the phasing out. I, I um, believe so. Yes, so it does apply, um, and in 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 the description in the policy, it only applies when the student attending the secondary school was registered at that school in September 2022. So that was last year, which would mean they have to be in at least grade 10 this year. Next year, they'll have to be in at least grade 11, and the following year, they would need to be in grade 12 and always returning to the school the following year. And then um, just to double check, can you recap a bit of the wait list process again? Um, you know, is this for central student interest programs or out of area admissions? And then when you talk about that wait list, are you told what number you are on the wait list as well? Yep. So for central student interest programs uh, and for out of area admissions, that that little image that I was showing uh, that came from the link, it, it shows you your exact position and it's an active link. You can check on it anytime you want to see if your position on the wait list has changed. Uh, and so as students are either placed into seats or uh, are placed into other programs and are removed from wait lists, uh, your position on the wait list may move up. The number may get smaller as you move higher on the wait list. Um, and again, if you have been accepted into your alternate program choice um, and you move up the wait list for your primary choice, if you are still on that wait list, you will be automatically placed and you will lose the space in your alternate choice. So again, need to be mindful if you're happy and, and, and you know, put your mind to, I, I want to go to my alternate program choice now where I have been seated, you need to request in writing to be removed from the wait list for your primary choice. Uh, out of area admissions, you have the one choice. If you're not seated, you can see where you are on the wait list. Uh, again, in some grades, there may be no seats available. 
Uh, and so your number on the wait list may not change. Okay. Thank you for that. We're going to try to power through some more questions. Uh, if you don't get accepted to any programs, you would attend your local school, Reiko? Um, yes, that, that is the school that, that that guarantees you access. Yes. Okay. And again, looking into your designated school by address and attending that open house, I think is an important thing to do uh, to see the rich programming uh, that's available. Someone had heard they had had a better chance of getting into their primary choice if you don't choose an alternate choice. Is that true? I don't believe so. No. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, what if a student is in a shared custody situation? Do both parents have access to the info during the application process? So there are a couple of important pieces here. We only are able to take one email address as the main communication piece. We also have an expectation and it's part of the acknowledgement in the application that where there are parents that have shared uh, decision-making responsibilities, that they are in agreement with uh, the application and that they are in agreement before they accept or decline a uh, spot. So it's important that uh, parents and guardians, again, who are, um, making decisions and both have a voice and a say in this uh, are, are on the same page. They must only submit one email address. We can't set up the system to have more than one uh, email for communication. Okay. Uh, can you just clarify as far as priority, is there any priority given to students who identify as 2SLGBTQIA plus uh, or, or priority grouping on the lottery? Uh, can you speak to that? Uh, so for central student interest programs, um, and so when when these were established last year, looking at uh, it, it's considered a, a special program, not not the same as the special programs in the schools, but when one sets priorities uh, to address uh, under service and under representation, uh, there needs to be data both um, of the representation of a particular group within the program and within the larger population. So we needed to have data about the representation at the board level and representation within the, each, each of the individual programs. And we still do not have that representation data for two, uh, for LGBT plus to QIA. Uh, and so as we are now going through the 2023 census, we may be at a point where we will be able to, in future years, look at different priority groups where, again, there is underrepresentation within the programs and under service when compared to the larger uh, population of the board. Okay, I'm going to try to squeeze in a couple of more. Can a student in TDSB apply to two central student interest programs with the TDSB and to two student interest programs with the TCDSB? So I can't speak to what you can apply to in the in the Catholic School Board, uh, but I, I can say that within the TDSB, you have your primary and you have your alternate choice. And we'd like you here. Okay, thank you yes. for that. Uh, for new students who have landed in Canada this year and are, and are in grade nine, is there a possibility students can apply in grade 10? Again, some of the programs do have admission in grade 10. Um, off the top of my head, Ursula Franklin Academy, probably half of the art, maybe two thirds of the arts programs, uh, three of the international baccalaureate programs have grade 10 entry. Okay, and we've got time for one more. If a student gets accepted to the primary choice, but they actually wanna go to their alternate choice, can they do that? No, if you are seated in your primary choice, you are completely removed from the list for your alternate choice. So again, think carefully about the application before you submit it, walk the walk, go through the halls, experience, and really think about what, what your priority is. Okay, thank you for that. We have answered approximately 350 <laughs> questions. Uh, we are very sorry that we could not answer them all. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, the recording of this event will be available next week on the Parent, Caregiver, and Community Engagement Office YouTube channel and will be available on the TDSB guidance page and the Central Student Interest Program website. The slides, the shared links, the Q&A will also be posted on the Central Student Interest Program website uh, next week. Uh, my our sincere thanks to Munshi Wong supporting this webinar and thank you to our interpreters this evening for supporting our families. Thank you to the guidance Career Development and Student Wellbeing Department, uh, our central and school-based staff for assisting with the Q&A this evening and helping to coordinate this evening's event. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Uh, enjoy. Thank you.